Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Church Mag, and I have another unprogrammed episode for you guys. Unprogrammed is where we get to talk about anything within church tech that we want to, and we got five minutes unedited to get through the topic. This week I want to talk to you guys about what it means to be an expert within church tech. And there's this idea being thrown around that there are people out there that truly know what it means to be an expert. If we really hold on to what that means to be an expert at something, it means that you have invested 10 years worth of your life. I think it roughly translates to 20,000 hours, I believe. And so there's this idea that we need to be able to listen to the experts out there. And the problem with that is if you have a blog and if you have a social media account, you can pretend to be an expert in something. You can read a bunch of different people's blog articles and say, oh, I sort of get this. I've tried it maybe once or twice. And then you pretend to be an expert. And so you start throwing around a lot of ideas. You start to critique other people because it did not fit in your one situation that one time. And so... There's a lot of people out there that will say, oh, no, you're totally wrong in everything that you have to say. And they don't necessarily come from a place of actual experience. They're just saying from their one time in that one place, it didn't work for them. And then there's other people that have a solution that did work for them in their small church, their large church, their church from the south or the north or actually from America whenever there's a whole entire world outside of there. And so I challenge you guys on what it means to be an expert in something. There's a lot of people I would actually call a church tech expert because they have the experience, they have the, the wisdom and the leadership. Mike Sessler from Church Tech Arts, he knows what it means to do soundboard. Eric Dye talks about audio like it's his life because it was his life. And there's people out there that understand social media so well. Justin Wise, I call him an expert. There are people like uh, Chris, Chris Wilson who has not only looked at apps in general for your devices, but has looked at Android and Apple. He understands what it means to have that cross-platform. And there's other people out there like Phil Schneider, who understands what it means to write and to write really well. Uh, it, that just the, it's, it seems endless. I mean, I can even think of a couple more. Dustin Stout, he has creativity. He has that nailed down. And so you can keep going with this list, but what does it mean to be an expert at something? And so I really, really encourage you guys, if you are talking to people online, they say, here's a great idea, and just listen to me, I'm an expert. Challenge them what they say. The reason I'm going about this is, there's a lot of people out there that say, hey, Google Plus is a terrible social platform. It's going down the hill, it's going down the drain, it's a ghost town, it's a graveyard, stuff like that. I get it. A lot of people have not found success on Google Plus, and, and I understand that. So your, your audience is not there. That makes sense. If your audience is the church, and your church congregation or your church community is not on Google Plus, that makes sense. Don't go to Google Plus, but you can't call it a graveyard if you haven't actually experienced it yourself. So there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, Google Plus, it's going downhill, and they say, listen to me, I know what I'm talking about. I do social media for a living. And then you go and check. I've done this about mm, 40 different times with a lot of major companies, a lot of individuals that call themselves gurus, including in the church, say this is happening, and then you go visit their Google Plus page, and they've maybe made one post in the last six months. They have maybe actually interacted with people occasionally in the last three years, let alone within the last year whenever Google Plus has been making changes. And this is just one example. There's a whole lot of examples of how do you rewire your church? Should I be using LCD screens? What are some great streaming software out there? And so people love to give their opinion. If you don't, under, if you don't believe me, just go onto Twitter and ask, should I get Android or Apple? And there'll be a lot of people saying, Apple is the best, and they've never tried Android. Other people saying, don't listen to Apple, they're all fanboys, and they've never actually given them a shot. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this discussion of what it means to be an expert in your church. Because in some ways, a lot of pastors see you, if you're in church tech position within your church as a volunteer or staff person, you are seen as their expert. And if you're giving advice that's unqualified because you don't know the full scope of something, you could be putting your church and your ministry into some very dangerous situations, spending money you don't have, um, wasting it, wasting valuable time, energy, um, being able to set your credibility up for failure. And so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this topic, both locally, internationally, publicly, privately. What does it mean to be an expert? Leave your guys' comments below. We'll talk to you guys next time.